This is our Planet of the Apps, a whole new world where apps and mobile technology form an integral part of our everyday lives. From helping us with everyday tasks, to entertaining us at the bus stop, to some things that are just plain amazing. You know, a great man once said, a lot of times people don't know what they want until you show it to them, and that's where we come in. Team Planet of the Apps Assemble! Yeah. Here we are. What an amazing series we've had this year. Um, Lucy, what's been your favourite part? Oh, well, I've had some pretty interesting chats with some cool people this season. So there was Rory Reid, car enthusiast and all-round good guy, uh, Otis Dealey from Gadget Show, and then there was, of course, Crazy Tube Guy. And David, one of my favourite things that you've done this year, actually, is when you took your drone to the park yes. and you managed somehow to fly it directly into... Whoa, 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 whoa. Why don't we watch it? Great idea. I'm not going to spoil it. If you missed it earlier on this year, here it is in all its glory. Welcome back. All of our remote control kit is all charged and ready to go. Now, we took a look at the Parrot AR drone earlier on. It actually comes with both an outdoor and this, an indoor hull. These bumpers around the outside mean the rotors don't shred your curtains. But we'll be taking a look at the moment at how it flies outdoors. Now, these two choppers, the Helo TC Assault that uses this flight deck and infrared to control it, I found this to be quite fiddly and quite laggy to fly, not particularly satisfying. The redeeming feature, however, is that it can fire missiles on demand. The Helo TC Chopper, on the other hand, this is Bluetooth controlled, and this was far more satisfying to fly because it's just far more responsive. Certainly my favorite out of the two choppers. Now, Coming on to Sphero. This is one of my favourite devices of the day. I think it's always a good sign when you start to develop a, a relationship, uh, when it develops a personality, and that was certainly the case with the Severo. As I was rolling it about the floor, I found it to be very responsive, and unlike my pets, it can change colour. Once you get the hang of it, it's very responsive indeed, and you can do some quite intricate little manoeuvres with it. I've actually got a bit of an assault course set up just here. Finally, there is the Griffin Moto TC Rally. Now, this is a big car, and it doesn't have very much of a turning circle either. And for me, that means it's gonna be better outdoors, perhaps, than indoors. When it does get on a straight line, it can go very fast, but I think it's gonna be better suited when you're racing, perhaps, with your friends outdoors rather than in. As promised, we've come outside to put the AR Drone 2.0 through its outdoor paces. Have a quick look at how to set it up, what's involved in making it fly. It's made out of carbon fiber. It's got an ARM Cortex processor running Linux on there, and it sets up its own Wi-Fi network to connect to your tablet. So if you tilt it left, right, up or down, the drone will follow the pattern of your tilting. The amount of control you have over this is extraordinary. These rotors are spinning at 30,000 revolutions or so per minute. Considering it's flying outdoors and there's a bit of a breeze here, it's using about nine or 10 different sensors in there to make sure it knows how far off the ground it is, whether it's being blown in any given position as well. It's so maneuverable and it's so much fun to fly that the drone is perhaps the favorite of all the flying gadgets and remote control gadgets that we've looked at today, followed very closely by the Sphero. I describe this as flying fun without the fat. It's absolutely true. Unbelievable. <laughs> what a shot. It couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. It's true. Uh, now, th this year, guys, I've played a lot of games, haven't I? I've stayed up mm -hmm. late at night, way past my bedtime, surfing the apps market, trying to find any hidden treasures. It's almost killed me. But, Savage, if I was to ask you what were your, say, top, top five games, what would you say? It's a good question. I'm glad you brought that up, David. It's almost like we've rehearsed this. Um, here they are, my top, top five games of the year. Real smooth, that was. Right, here are the games that I've deemed the creme de la creme in mobile awesomeness from across the series. At five! Many games have come and gone which have tried to perfect the first-person shooter. As we all settle down to the latest iteration of Call of Duty, Battlefield, even Grand Theft Auto now for that matter, none have managed to do the business when it comes to mobile. Modern Combat 5 Blackout, however, is just wowza. Bringing quality visuals and one of the most competent handheld control systems to date, it's the bee's knees in squad combat, whether playing with your pals locally or going solo in the quick-fire campaign mode. 
MC5 ticks all the right boxes, and it's great to see that the big boys haven't won the mobile war just yet. At four, there aren't many games which veer away from fast-paced action and towards reading things. Apart from BBC Micro's educational masterpiece, The Crystal Rainforest, which remains the foundation of my overall IQ. Device 6 blew me away, though. It's what I would refer to as an MGC, a mobile game changer, which has cleared the way for a whole new type of puzzle game. The premise alone is hugely inviting, what with solving clues on an unfamiliar island. But it's the combination of sound, investigative picture gameplay, and imaginative story which makes it so enjoyable. You like Agatha Christie, Conan Doyle, or books with pictures? You'll flippin' love this. At three. Always aspire to breaking out of jail, driving like a lunatic, becoming a mafioso, and wearing the hand-me-downs from the cast of Miami Vice? You know where I'm going with this. GTA Vice City is the reimagined console classic now available for your smartphones and tablets, and is every bit as good as it was originally. This thing is a beast, and whether you want to play it safe and go undetected by the cops, or you're having a bad day, Vice City cannot possibly disappoint. At two. A game's title could often speak volumes, in my opinion. There was If It Moves, Shoot It, and Barkley, Shut Up and Jam, and World Soccer Winning 11 5 Final Evolution. You can't even say that last one without losing your breath. The Impossible game does exactly what it says on the tin, though, and although it might look like something a 10-year-old may have drawn, it's every bit as challenging as it claims. Guiding an orange block around the screen doesn't sound too menacing. Oh, really? You try it! Great music, tough levels, and easy controls make it a real winner in my book. At number one, can I just say Lego? Honestly, every Lego game that you can find available to you on your smartphones, just get it. Star Wars is banging, Lord of the Rings is epic, and Harry Potter has broomsticks. I mean, you can't possibly go wrong. The replayability of each of the different titles is insane, as you'll want to go back again and again to unlock everything and collect every last stud available. Many games on the apps market require a tap here and a swipe there, but the LEGO franchises offer a console experience right in the palm of your hand. All the above prove one very obvious thing. Ah, oh, games, I love you for eternity. And David, you love technology. Um, yep. What's been your highlight this season? Highlights, um, lots of them, but we did a thing on smartwatches a few weeks ago, and I'm still wearing my Pebble Steel smartwatch. Absolutely love this thing. It looks hot. Thank you. I like that. What about yourself, Lucy? I loved the shoot I did of Tiggs Rice. So she's a professional photographer. She brought along her Wacom Cintiq tablet, showed me a selection of creative apps, which basically means she can ultimately take her studio with her wherever she goes. Pretty fascinating stuff. Amazing. If you missed that earlier on this season, here it is right now, Lucy and Tiggs Rice. For today's photography professionals, the job's no longer just about the camera and the composition. It's about having access to an arsenal of nifty tech and whiz-bang software, all of which serve to enhance creativity, not hinder or digitise it. Today, we're crashing a shoot with pro photographer Tiggs Rice, who specialises in boudoir and burlesque. Her style may be vintage, but she has a few tech tricks up her sleeve to help her achieve her unique look. Um, well, today we're on location in Hampstead Heath at the Cola, mm -hmm. and oh, we're yes. shooting the lovely Anna, who is over here. Um, and we're doing some fashion inspired by the like, vintages they do. Yeah. And it's a pleasure to have you here with us. All right, should we make a start? Yeah, let's go. Wicked. me about the tech you're going to be using today. Well, we're going to be using two pieces of technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we're starting on the iPad using Lightroom Mobile. Yeah. And then we're going to be switching to the Wacom Cintiq Companion and doing some final retouching on there as well. If we go into the Lightroom app, mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of things that we can do in here. So you can see I've got two shoots. I've got Anna, which we shot today. They um, look stunning. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so these are all the photos. Well, not all, but most of the photos that we took. And the first thing that I can do is I can give this to the client oh, yes. and I can say okay right well you can click on click on any of the ones that you like, I like that um, one. and then if you like it you mm -hmm. can swipe up to 
pick it. Or oh, if awesome. you don't like it, you can swipe down. And <laughs> everything that I'm doing here at the moment is syncing straight back into the Cintiq Companion via uh, Creative Cloud. So Tiggs, I want to know more about this bad boy over here. So the yeah. photos, have been looking at them on the iPad, <laughs> they've now hit the cloud and they're now delivered to your Cintiq tablet. They are, yeah. I so noticed you've got a stylus in your hand as I well. I have. So this is the Cintiq Companion. Mm -hmm. um, it's a full touch screen, so I can work on it. I can zoom in and out as well, um, and then I can use the pen on here as well. Uh, it's a great, great piece of kit. Yeah. What we're going to do now is fix them in editing, so any final changes, exposure, um, any final details with white balance, because this is all colour corrected as well, yeah. I can actually see the true colours on here. So let's have a quick look at this one then. It's mostly, it's mostly okay for the exposure. Um, we can see up here by the histogram that maybe it's a little bit too bright. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to knock down the highlights here and bring that down. Just come back up here as well. Come up to the top. I'm just going to knock that some of that yellow out. Not too much. You make it look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> And there we go. What do you think? Amazing, Tiggs. I didn't doubt for a second that you were going to wow and amaze me. I said it, <laughs> didn't I? So is this literally as close as you get to working with a full fat PC, giant screen in a studio? Yeah, it's exactly the same, but I get to do it in a wonderful location like this rather than sat in my studio at home. So it's the ultimate photographer's tool. It really is, yeah. <laughs> Tiggs, thank you so much. I've had such a great day. Me too. Thanks for joining me today. My pleasure. It amazes me the speed of development around smartphones and tablets now. When you look at smartphone screens, for example, even in the last two years, 18 months, they've been growing and growing. Yeah. Six inches is not uh, unordinary. Remember the Dell Streak from a few years ago? Do you remember the Dell Streak? It had a five inch screen and we laughed at it. It was too big. We weren't yeah. ready. We weren't ready for this. Now it's all about the brick again. The brick is back. Uh, on that note, don't go anywhere. Join us back here in a few minutes time for more Best of Planet of the Apps. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.